All right, let's go ahead and hit new game, shall we? Yes. Oh, I'll reset my five seconds of progress. I've got my uh, my see-through shirt today. You are my enslavement and my freedom. You are my flesh burning like a raw summer night. You are my country. Nazim Hikmet ran. Run, Nazim, run. Like sea spot run. Spot ran. It's whiskey and chocolate. Night. Whoa, whiskey and chocolate. More from nachos. Hang on. Uh, okay, I think this is paused here. Uh, sandals in without socks in the snow and winter weather. Uh, makes your feet feeling cold here. Well, I mean, it's a good thing you didn't wear sandals and socks. Now, that would be crazy. Sandals in the snow, that's fine. But socks and sandals? Pff, that would be nuts. <laughs> uh, Torquor Games from Berlin, Germany. Oh, man. Well, whenever we can travel again, and Ascension and I are definitely going back to Berlin when we can travel again, because we love that city. Uh, I'll have to see if I can stop by their offices or something. You know, say hi, because uh, I'm very excited about this one. <clears throat> 1908. Kingdom of Swordland. You opened your eyes to this world, and you came from... One. A wealthy... This is a multiple choice. We get to choose here. Do we want to come from a wealthy family in the city of Lockhaven? Do we want to come from a middle-income family in the city of Hullsword? Or an impoverished family in the city of Dare? So are we really, you know, are we a chosen person blessed with the luck of being rich? Do we start from the bottom and try to, you know, change change things for the better at least we say we will but then once we come into power maybe things will change or middle class i think there's a lot of votes for three not a lot for one a fair number for two a lot for three i think we'll, we'll, we'll go three then a bit of a rags to riches kind of thing and then be like i got mine screw the rest of you or maybe we'll actually try to do you know the best we've we've seen what it was like we know how hard it is and we'll try to like you know offer enough enough backing for other people to rise out of poverty I don't know what kind of person we'll be. All right, an impoverished family in the city of Dyer. Or Dare? How do we want to say it? Your parents named you Anton. As the only child of a farmer, you spent your childhood among wheat fields. Life was not easy. You were too poor to afford a good education. The Rain family was caring regardless of the economically dire situation. So Anton Rain, is that our name then? Uh, your parents always did their best to support you. The years passed. Anton Rain sounds like a like a action movie or video game star, right? It's like they took his family's farm, but now Anton is out for revenge. You can see it now, summer of 2021, Reign of Terror. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey Tony. Actually, I think I missed another one earlier. Uh no, I didn't. Okay, excellent. Uh hey Quill, wish there was some way we could help cheer you up. Uh get you something that you would enjoy. Maybe you could set up some sort of fun. Yeah, for like some sort of whiskey and or chocolate? Those are usually pretty happy. Ways to make me happy. Excellent. Uh, so this is, okay, this is, we're, uh, we're 15 years old now. Okay, formation of the Republic. During a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You hear a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. One, you do not fully understand. Two, you're happy you had the day off. Everyone's voting two because that's pretty, uh, like, that's, I mean, we're 15. We're like, yeah, fine. Or you were somewhat worried. Honestly? I mean, 15, you're not an idiot, right? At 15, you can see some implications of things, but people want two. All right. We're happy we had the day off. 1926. After graduating from high school, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose one, law at Holford State University, two, economics at La Caven Business School, or three, history at the Dyer University of Culture. Well, here's the thing. If we were thinking we might go into politics, like law is the most typical way to get through um, into politics. Although economics would also be a fairly valuable thing as well. Um, history, maybe less so, but it would be at home. Dyer is where I'm from. Lots of votes for one. We're going to go for one, I think. During the first year, you attended a lecture with David Whiskey. Whiskey. We'll call him Whiskey. I mean, come on. How could we not be friends with, with Professor Whiskey? Or oh, not a professor. Okay. He was a well-known diplomat from the Ferengi ministry, okay, the foreign ministry, and the son of the president. 
After observing the hall in silence, he explained how the Supreme Court is obstructing justice in Swordland. He stated that laws should be applied fairly, and that even the members of the Supreme Court are subject to the same laws. We agree in principle. You question what you were being taught. You're only concerned with passing the exams. I mean, I agree in principle, like, laws should apply to everyone. Certainly they should apply to members of the Supreme Court, shouldn't they? Of course we're going to say one. Got more whiskey and chocolate, I think. Uh, oh, it's named Moose! Sandals are superfluous in the snow. Hooves are entirely sufficient. So I wonder what name Moose thinks of his um, uh, metal-shod brethren in terms of uh, of horses, right? With ho with um, with horseshoes, I guess. Is there another word? I don't know. Horseshoes. Because obviously Moose don't need or don't use horseshoes, but they also don't walk on uh, hard paved roads, which is really where it comes up more. May 22nd, 1927. Oh, there's a coup. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest, along with your best friend, Peter Vectern. You decided to protest with the students or avoid any confrontation. Lots of people want one. So we're going to be we're going to be very socially active right from the start. Now we're going to stand up to oppression. OK, we're going to protest with the students. One of the officers made a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Luderan declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. He joined the students that slowly marched towards the large group of soldiers. Suddenly, the soldiers charged. A student fell and was trampled as everyone started running away. Do we hold our ground or run off? <laughs> Option one, you die, game over. Could be, we don't know. Lots of votes for one. Okay, apparently we're like super, we're super brave. Probably braver than most people would be. We're gonna hold our ground. The soldiers beat you relentlessly. It was a gloomy year. Yeah, just wait until 2020, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right, October 10th of 1927. The arrested teachers were replaced by those that promoted conformism to the state. Holsford, Holsford turned a blind eye to the things that were happening. You didn't want to stay idle and decided to join a human rights group, a student council, or a political debate group. I kind of like this. Um, I kind of like, like, so a lot of people want one, but I was wondering about like a two or a three. A lot of okay, a lot of twos. I think I'm gonna do that. We're we'll joining to the student council. Council. We're gonna we're gonna try to get involved. See if we can like you know bring about change working within the system. Perhaps I don't know. The council was focused on increasing the student involvement in the campus, along with partaking in the budget. Through active participation, you gain budget management and leadership skills. In one of the meetings, I want the third one might lead to more debate. The first one just leads to more maybe social awareness. I don't know. I don't know how this game works. No clue. Um, in one of the meetings, Peter, that's our best friend, introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who is a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women. You are immediately attracted to her intelligence, her beauty, her diligence. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always attracted to the largest sex organ in a human being, the brain. You know, her intelligence. Plus, we're going to need a good partner for whatever bullshit is going to happen in here. We need a strong partner by our side. The politically charged environment led you to 1. Join the Red Youth, the Socialists 2. Join the Young Swords, the Nationalists 3. Stay away from any political organization <laughs> I don't think I want to do 2. I don't want to do 2. Both 1 and 3 have some interesting possibilities. Because I don't know, do we want to be a Socialist or do we want to be someone like more just on the outside? Trying to bring about a different type of social change. We're going to go one. All right, June of 1928. 
the Sword of Civil War. Ooh. The radio relayed that the communist general Ricard surrounded Luteran and his troops, demanding their surrender. I wonder if whoever we choose, that's sort of the winning side, because presumably we're going to find ourselves in charge of the situation here, right? Like we're, I think we're going to be a, the leader of the country, I think is the vibe with this. So presumably whatever side we choose, that's the side that's ultimately going to come up and then we rule, but I don't know. I, well, obviously, you have to replay it. Like, if maybe every one of these decisions leads to completely different situations. What happens if we start off rich instead of poor? Here's the thing. We start out poor, it might be more of a socialist, communist kind of vibe. I don't know. Radio relayed communist general Ricard surrounded Luteran and his troops, demanding their surrender. They refused, and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Swordland plunged into chaos. Ricard's sudden attack caused more instability in the country. But compared to fascist Luteran, he was a real socialist. This convinced you to participate in a support march. You were chanting, Freedom, equality, and solidarity. Two, workers of the world, unite. Three, bring down the fascists. Kind of like one. Two doesn't really do much for me. Um, I mean, bringing down the fascists, yeah, of course. But I think that's implied in one. You are marching under the protection of Ricard soldiers. That's the, uh, the the socialist guy. The students opposing the coup gathered a few hundred meters in front of you. Many nationalists were among them. You knew something was going to happen. I mean, yeah, technically, we are participating in a coup against a coup, I guess? Because there was a coup in 27 by the fascists, but now there's a counter coup? Um... The students opposing the coup gathered in a few hundred meters in front of you. Many nationalists were among them. You knew something was going to happen. We stayed. We left. Of course we're going to stay. That's been our vibe so far. We don't run away from this stuff. There was a massive clash between the two sides. Soldiers began to beat the students. Tanks started rolling forward. In this chaotic moment, you saw a young girl about to get run over by a tank. We ran to save her. Couldn't reach her in time. You never forgot her face. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope, and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos must end. The Charismatic Colonel. So this is 1929, Republic of Swordland. Saul restores the Republic. All right. The charismatic Colonel Tarkin Saul, <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin Saul, orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end. Another coup! Man, we've seen so many coups. It's crazy. Um, he wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran as a presidential candidate in the first ever election. You voted for the United Swordland Party. You did not vote. No, you, we have to vote. We, of course, we're going to vote. The USP won the election by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed, noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived in the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. So at this point, we are 21 years old. 21 years old, we've just been called up to serve in the army. February 1930, Bergia region. A devastating civil war broke out in a neighboring country, Weyland. The distinguished major, Josef Lancia, ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gumrin outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, Distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You escorted them back, let them slip through. So there are, in Wayland there's a civil war. Some refugees from Wayland have made it through the border into Swordland, to our country. Do we send them back or do we let them through? We're gonna, there you go. There's the twos. We're going to let them slip through. Let them come into the country. It's okay. Let them, let them escape the violence. We've seen too much violence. We're okay with letting people escape it. 
I mean, these are people who are leaving everything behind, right? You don't like willy-nilly be like, yo, lol, we'll just move to another country and steal all their services and stuff. It's not like that. You're like, holy shit, I have to give up absolutely everything I've ever had and everyone I've ever known to try to escape because that's how bad it is. Come on. After the patrol, Major Lancia arrived with anger and immediately relieved you of your command, calling you a disappointment. One of your squad members had reported your actions. After several months of scrubbing the floors as punishment, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. Thirty-one. You and Monica decide to share your lives together. We've known each other for quite some time at this point. Um, after receiving the blessing of her parents, a ceremony was held in Holsford. Holsford. During the same year, you worked hard to secure a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. It was much more difficult to start your career on a good foot because of the refugee incident. Oh, our career! But still, you managed. We've got an option. One, working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. Two, the financial compensation was too great to pass up. Three, it was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. Lots of threes, a one, three, two, three, some twos, lots of threes. It was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. Again, sort of vibes with something we were doing before when we joined the student council, right? We're going to like look into getting into the, the system to try to change it that way. You became the legal assistant to one of the more experienced members of the assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late at work and going through hundreds of pages of legal documents. You were climbing the ladder. September 1933. Saul strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the further king the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country as the massive economic boom continued, and people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. President Tarkin Saul was elected once more. April 2nd, 1934. The ongoing legal battle between the Justice Ministry and the Supreme Court put you under a lot of stress, but your significant contribution to the legal case triggered an invitation to meet President Tarkin Soul himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of the Assembly. You accepted right away, or you accepted with doubts? Why would we have doubts? Lots of people are saying two, but more people I think are saying one. Woo, it's, it's tough! It's tough. <laughs> Too sus. Because it's fishy. Is it fishy? I don't know. Either way, we're going to accept. So, of course we'll accept. Sure. We'll see what happens. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies. So you brought Peter, our best friend from high school, as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, provided a brief moment of joy and relief. You sacrifice work to spend time with your family or sacrifice family to improve the position in your party. Yeah, I was afraid it was going to come to this when it was talking about all the hard work before. Oof. Oof. I think the ones in chat are winning. It's hard to tell, but yeah, it looks like the ones are winning. So apparently we're going to sacrifice work to spend time with our family. And then other people are like, screw the family. During your absence, Peter found trustworthy contacts and strengthened your position in the party. At the same time, President Soul increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. What time is it? Oh, look, guys, it's Ku o'clock. Excellent. The cracks begin to show. Saul's fourth election win. Wow. Yeah, second, third, fourth, fifth. President Saul barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a United Swordland Party Congress became louder as a leadership struggle began to brew. You watched from the sidelines, kept supporting the president, joined the internal opposition. I don't think I want to keep supporting the current president. So, and we're of course going to get involved. We're not going to watch from the sidelines. So we are going to join the internal opposition. July 1946. You gave your support to Ewald Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate who was the main contender for party leadership. Meanwhile, in a desperate effort to secure votes before the Congress, President Saul was meeting party members one by one. 
but he didn't approach you. August 46. The party congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Swordland were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists, and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. Well, we're going to vote for Ewald Alfonso. Let's put them first. The efforts bore fruit as the contentious leadership vote was won by Ewald Alfonso. So it would be interesting if we could have thrown our support behind... Uh, Alfonso, but then voted for Saul. I'm betting whoever we vote for here wins. And, like, we put ourselves in a position where the leader of the party hates us. During the Congress, Saul announced his retirement from politics. You knew the structure he had established was to stay, the country becoming increasingly authoritarian. You were happy that Saul was finally leaving, were troubled by the pressure of Saul, didn't care who was in charge. I think we're happy that he's leaving. I think we're happy that he's leaving. Although I'm troubled that it's authoritarian, at least until I become in charge, then it's fine. It can be as authoritarian as we want. October 15th. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Deanna. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. The United Swordland Party was under new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. You joined the party effort and campaign for him, or did your best not to help him? Why would we not help him? Because we want another party to take over? To just cause some drama llama? Maybe we should start uh, rolling the dice to see where it goes for some of these. Help the man. So you can run instead. Now lots of votes for one. Okay, we'll join the party effort and campaign for him. Maybe we can get a high-ranking seat in the cabinet. <gasps> During the general elections, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with his secretary, diminishing their chances. The extensive privatization program proposed by El Ewald Alfonso secured an election victory for the United Swordland Party. Over the next years, you... Did your best in order to make Swordland a better place? Tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder? Or dedicated yourself to the party and its success? I think it's one or, th or one or two here. One, two, one. Two, one. Oh, they're pretty close. Alright. Odd is one. Even is two. Even. Tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder. The presidency of Ewald Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition efforts to win. You thought that your party could not survive another crisis, were worried about the economic recession, worried that your reputation would be tarnished along Alfonso. Is it time to jump ship? Which to me, one and three both kind of sound like jumping ship. Lots of votes for three is a fair number of votes for two. Let's go three. Together, Peter, your presence in the USB grew and you became the face of a new wing in the party. Okay, so we're still working in the party, but not alongside Alfonso. We're like, uh, we're like the progressive branch of the Democratic Party at this point, right? Right? We're, we're, we're Bernie Sanders. We're an AOC. We're that sort of thing. We're in the party. But are we really? Right? Exactly. Are we supposed to just keep going higher? Okay. Um, you effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You blame Alfonso for the crisis in television. Bribed and extorted Alfonso's inner circle. Oof. Or advised Alfonso to step down. Look, yeah, lots of threes. Okay, we'll 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 advise him to step down. Clearly, a fresh face needs to be in charge of the party. Can't get any fresher than this. Ooh, he didn't take your advice seriously and started to reshuffle the cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. Your diplomatic attitude made the party vote you in as the leader. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Peter as your running mate. It was your turn. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to 
enact democratic reforms or prefer, preserve national value. You know, we were a little worried about the authoritarian bend of things. Let's go ahead. We're going to enact democratic reforms. Like the whole reason, at least what we keep telling ourselves, right? The whole reason we were trying to rise in power in terms of politics was so that we could make things better. And here is finally our chance to do it. And we will try to make things better by enacting democratic reforms. The people are tired of empty promises. We need fundamental change in our institutions and government. A solid and transparent democracy awaits us. Brothers and sisters, a new constitution and a new age is upon us. Vogue, strike a pose. The broadcast ended. On election day, millions went out to cast their votes. It was time to face the truth. Achievement Unlocked, Prologue, Rise to Power. Chapter 1, President Rain. Oh yeah, time to make it rain. I don't know if we know Peter's uh, last name. No, we must, I think they're what we did know, but I've forgotten. So we're now actually in the game. 